Even indoors now, I'm wearing shoes. Super comfortable shoes. It took me a while to break into them, but it's so cold. <laughs> the heater is either too hot or too cold. So, shoes is good. For as long as I can remember, I have never been able to justify the cost of an iPhone to the benefits of owning an iPhone. But what if I got one? Would I use it? I always said I'd sell it because it was less functional than an Android for me. But now I'm giving it second thoughts. Here's why. When it comes to Android users, I think there are three kinds. One, those who are passionately involved and love customization that Android provides. I'd call these guys the pro users or the enthusiast users. Second are the haters. They just hate iPhones because they're expensive and Android can do better. And But they would never try. Emotion, relatively emotional users. And then they are the ones who don't really care and want a cheap phone. I think these guys make up the majority of the Android user base. And the arguments you hear on the passionate Android side are pretty true. I make these arguments too. Apple took 10 years to copy the widgets on to their iPhones. So many people have so many other customizations that they do on their Androids that iPhones just did not permit. There's also the argument of the notification tray being a clutterfest. In some regards, they're slow and it feels like an inferior product for more of the money. But having said that, they also set trends. I mean, uh, my phone, the OnePlus 5T, was a pretty inexpensive phone back when I got it. And uh, in my opinion, it looks beautiful. It's a nice AMOLED screen, a really dark black AMOLED screen. To my surprise, the exact same double camera bump array with a flash in the side was an iPhone design. OnePlus just copied it. And it's not just a lucky copy, like in this case. This is happening for a while now. Google was working on their own BlackBerry-style phone with a hardware keyboard. But when they saw the iPhone presentation, they abandoned that idea and went for full touchscreen. The result was the very first Android phone. It started off with the Samsung Galaxy S2. Back in the day, Apple argued that they came up with this design of a squarey icon and one button in the front. They had a list of things that uh, Galaxy had copied. Back when I read that, I was definitely a hater who thought they're making too much of a big deal of something that looks remote. Yeah, I've, I was on the Android side back then. In fact, if you look at any radical change that Apple did to the iPhone, all Android manufacturers just took it in. The year they came up with notches, the year they got rid of their button and wanted to make the bezels much smaller, everyone wanted to do the same. The year they came up with that squarey camera bump with two or three cameras in them, everyone needed to have it. Apple thought of making their iPhone boxes smaller and it kind of feels cool, it feels trendy, it feels new, feels designed and of course, everyone has to hop on the bandwagon. I consider myself one of those enthusiastic uh, pro-line kind of users who pushes his phones to its limits and I wanted to buy myself a new phone. And when I looked at the OnePlus 8T Pro, that was the best of the best when I was looking for a new one. Just looking at the way it looks and the camera array behind, I was just so put off. And so I'm asking myself, do I like the 5T because it looks like an iPhone? This has caused me go down the rabbit hole and look at Pixel phones because Google is pulling a plug on their unlimited storage video on that pretty soon. I'm just asking myself, is it worth staying with OnePlus? just because their design doesn't look as appealing. Don't get me wrong, I still accuse Apple for actively retarding the evolution of technology because of their greed for profits or because they want people to keep buying iPhones. USB is universal, it goes into every computer, right? You can just take in one big block of a charger, one charger, and that's it. You can use the setup for all new Android phones. You can use it for the new Windows phones, even Macs, MacBook Air Pro, iPad Pro, iPad Air. All of these guys work with it, but for the iPhone. Their biggest cash cow does not want to adapt. And that's holding humanity behind. <laughs> I still accuse them for that, of course. Macs, for example, work very well with iPhones. So you record something on your iPhone, you can put it immediately on your Mac. You try to do it with your Android. And even if there is a service that mimics AirDrop, Apple blocks it down. There is technology to pull us front and make life convenient today. And Apple still retards it. Don't get me wrong about that. But looking at these trends, I noticed that the haters who say Apple has not innovated in the phone industry for the last 10 years, that is just pure hate, <laughs> emotional inclination towards a phone. Steve Jobs said, I will spend my last dying breath and every penny in Apple's 40 billion, back then it was 40, now it's 200, to right this wrong, to destroy Android. It's a stolen product, thermonuclear war. He was a fanboy. Of course, it's his baby. 
and it's justified that he's that much of a fanboy about his 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 baby but are you that proud or fanboy about the iphone or the android if you are i've got bad news for you these companies can break your heart if you are a die hard oneplus fan they'll come up with a shitty oneplus phone and that day that year you're not having a nice year like these football fans who lament about their team not making it and if my company gifts me an iphone i won't sell it no longer an iphone hater thank you so much for tuning into this one think about those two questions and i'd love to hear from you